Hey everybody, how's everybody doing? It's been ages again, but uh, we're going to try something new. Uh, a while ago on uh, Instagram, I put a thing, I called it Tools of the Trade, and I just did pictures around the shop. Um, seems to get a lot of interest, even old YouTube vids. Lots of people are asking, hey, what was that thing in the corner, and what was that bottle there? What do you use? What's the brand? I, I know that's a popular thing on the forum as well. So I'm going to do a series here of going around the shop, sort of a uh, little section by little section. I'll try and keep the videos to about like 10 minutes or so, uh, or 15 minutes, or else they just get too long. Uh, and I'll do, I don't know, however many parts it's going to take to do it. But I'll explain everything, uh, what I use, the brand names, I'll maybe put the links in the descriptions and uh, give you, oh God, it looks like I'm cross-eyed. <laughs> um Anyway, we'll uh, do a little tour and we'll kind of go shelf by shelf and I'll tell you what I got. I'll show you what I use and what I use it for and a little explanation and we'll go from there. Okay, gang. Okay, and here we go. And I said I'm going to go step by step and piece by piece so you can see everything that I use here. So there you go. Fire extinguisher. It's important for some of the stuff that we use in here. Uh, especially if you're using um, solvent-based uh, sealers like I do, uh, it's always good to have a couple up-to-date ones on hand in the in the house. That's an old welder's uh, apron, leather apron. I wear that when I cut rebar with my uh, grinding blade. Uh, this is what I used to use a lot of. Uh, you can see I've got a ton of it left, but I don't use a ton of it anymore. Half-inch and quarter-inch uh, wire for doing reinforcing. I used to use that on the leaves and other different, I do, in the odd project I do, I'll use it, uh, but but not a ton anymore. Uh, comes in handy if you just need a quick strip to reinforce something up, but I use the fiberglass scrim. We'll, we'll get to that. So we'll start on the top of here. This actually comes up a lot, people ask. These are the bowls. I've got a couple of videos on how to make, uh, you know, leaf bowls. So these are the big bowls I use. And everybody who asks, what are they? Where can I get them? You see, I got a variety of size. I got three or four different sizes in there. But um, they're from a company in the States called Cambro, C-A-M-B-R-O. And these are referred to in the restaurant, restaurant business as pebble bowls. You can see how it's the texture on the outside. They're what restaurants and hotels use for buffets for salads and stuff but they make fantastic molds for for bowls because they're nesting as well so you get a nice one inch thickness there if you nest a couple bowls and uh, they come in handy you can get them from restaurant supply stores uh, so whenever your area is look up a commercial uh, kitchen supplier and they can probably hook you up with uh, some sort of rubber made is another company that uh, for that supplies restaurants that also have products like that too um, just little, these little things, I use them when I paint little stuff, put some acrylic paints in. This you can use for just something I picked up for molds, like a mushroom stem or something. It's just a safety cone. So here's all the acrylics, the craft paint. People always ask, what kind of paints do I use? I use either like a really good uh, outdoor exterior or these acrylics hold up really well. Like I've got stuff at the house that's painted with this. And as long as they're sealed, they, they hold up for years and years. I mean, after six, seven years, they might start to fade and flake. But as long as you've kept your sealer on, they're really good. And you can see i got like a ton of colors. And you can mix your own colors as well. Um, here's one I've shown before. This is I use these a lot. And that's this brand here from Rust-Oleum. That's the gold base that I use. For, I've shown you with... Uh, my Buddhas, I use a ton. I've got like a soft gold. There's also like the, the brilliant gold and then a silver and a champagne, which is just actually another kind of a, a silver as well. Um, but they're really good. They hold up super well. It, they're really thick, a little bit costly, but a uh, little goes a long way with those, with those guys. Uh, down here, sponges, different kinds. I use for texturing when I stain, uh, when I do my washes, you know, a black wash over top of a statue. 
that's what I wet. I cut them in little pieces and uh, use those to wipe off the uh, excess paint after you've done a color wash. This here is just a home built screen for screening sand when you want to screen your sand for the leaves. Uh, I just prop that up on a couple 4x4s four four on either end and throw the sand in and give it a couple shakes. Doesn't take me long to fill up a five gallon pail full of sifted sand. It comes in really handy. So here, here's another question I get asked all the time too, uh, is these are all my stain, the water-based stains and the acid stains. So I'll use a little, pull out some of that. This is a, the brand I use for acid stain. So this is muriatic acid. Uh, this is the brand I use, the Proline. Uh, another one is Brick Form I've used before. I use about four or five different colors. Uh, this is a blue or an aqua blue. There's a green or a sea green I use. Western brown or rust or just a brown as well are nice for getting those sort of patina effects on things. And then all the spray bottles are all the uh, water-based. So here's the, this is the brand I use here from Increte. Uh, Increte's in the States, but they actually have an online shopping. I think you can purchase it online. I'm not 100% sure, uh, but at least you could ask your uh, commercial concrete dealer about Increte products and where you could get them. Uh, this stuff you mix uh, three to four, three or four to one in these bottles here. Um, you can use it straight. Um, for painting with. I've actually painted with it, I've sponged with it, I've brushed with it. Uh, it's really good. The, the, uh, the, the color palette is really big. Uh, there's a lot more colors than as opposed to as an acid stain. Uh, I like them. I don't have any noticeable yet. I mean any noticeable like fading or problems or issues with using the water base. I know lots of guys are old-fashioned. They, they've always used the acid, so they're scared to move away from it. But this stuff's coming on like gangbusters now. I was hesitant at first, too, but uh, I quite like it now. Um, so, and then this is the other. We've talked about this before. This is from Trinic Versicolor, and I'm sorry I can't remember the name on the forum. We were just talking about it, and somebody had checked and said it's like $20 an ounce U.S., and, and it's true. Uh, that little four ounce bottle cost me about $75 is what, what it cost me. Uh, not cheap, but again, you can mix this Trinit colors. You can mix with plain muriatic acid as a carrier, or you can mix it with water. And the carrier is just the delivery system to get it to the concrete to be absorbed, right? That's what the carrier means. Um, also a big variety. I really like their colors, really nice color. They're really bright, super vibrant. Uh, I really like the results, but it can get costly. So you can see I don't have a ton of those, but I've got some. Okay, so here is for when we mix our isopropyl alcohol and our carrier oil, which is the castor oil here. That's for our um, release for the, our molds, our, our latex molds. So it's about anywhere from 12 to 1 or I mix it about 7 or 8 to 1. Uh, one part of the castor oil to 7 or 8 parts of isopropyl alcohol and I use the 70 percent. Some people use the 90. The 70 percent is cheaper and it does just as good a job. So that's the company I get that from. That's in Ontario. I can get that online delivered here to BC. And it's uh, good stuff. I've got another big, huge jug of it, but we'll get to, to that one day. It was sort of a mistake in ordering. I double ordered. Um, what else I've got here when we come to talk about tools to the trade? This is just, I just got this one a year ago. I love it. It's a scale, a 400 pound scale. Uh, you can do it in kilos. You can do it in pounds. You can do it in ounces or grams. Uh, I like it. You just leave the little controller up on your tabletop, put this big guy down on the floor. And you know, I've told you before, I measure, I weigh out all my stuff. By no means, that's just me. You don't have to do it if you don't want to do it. That's up to you. Uh, but I like using it. Uh, it's handy for other things too. People always ask, how much does this weigh and how much does that statue weigh? And it's good for weighing. It's good for when we do shipping. 
to people too to throw it on these scales to get a quote from the the postal office as well too so what else have i got so here we go here's the we talk about the shellac all the time when you have something slick like a glass vase or uh, uh say a, a pottery piece with glazing on it that could be slippery and you really want your rubber to stick that's the spray shellac that i use you can buy the brushable one i found i get a little bit of runs in there and sometimes those runs actually show up on your rubber if there's a, a heavy concentration of it so i found the the spray is really good i give it two three quick coats uh, and it's ready to go the next day the uh this here in case you can't read the french <laughs> it's just foam insulation i use that for filling big voids if i'm doing some plaster work sometimes like i'll i'll crunch up some of the the steel mesh over there and then make a cavity and then fill it with the uh, spray foam uh, i also used to use it with the fiberglass plugs that i still make on occasion big plugs you make like a little cup to fill a void and then you fill that uh, fiberglass with the foam and the next day sand it down to size and then cap it with another piece of glass i've done videos on that too you could search the the library if you like and here's just my array of lacquer thinners and acetone of course you need for when you're doing fiberglass that's my old scale up there i don't use it much anymore those are the dust masks that i use just if i'm cutting uh, some glass or doing a lot of woodwork those are the little dust masks i wear this is a spray adhesive i tried for gluing like the styrofoam boards the pink or the blue insulation uh doesn't i don't like it doesn't work very good uh, in a day I can peel everything apart again so I don't recommend that brand maybe for crafting or something it's okay but not for the application I want and up here now this is what we were talking on the forum the other day about a confusion if you're in Great Britain uh, or Australia or New Zealand and you say PVA uh, to us in North America PVA is this it's this green liquid that we use as a separator for when we do, uh, or it's a release or separator for when you do fiberglass. Uh, you put that on the rubber, you put two coats of wax, of this Partol wax uh, onto your rubber, and then you put a, a couple of coats of this PVA on, and then your glass won't stick to the rubber. Uh, so I know to you guys, PVA is glue or a type of glue. Um, that's where we have to watch on the form when we recommend PVA. Uh, I've had two people have said to me, oh, you said in your video to put PVA in your mix. And I said, no, I never said to put PVA in your mix. So we have had some problems. So oh, just turn this around. So that's my catalyst for my fiberglass. That's what I use. I buy it in the big jugs. Lasts a good long time. Um, a little sprayer. You can see there I used to spray some of my leaves like put paint in there and spray them I've done PVA I've sprayed the problem is I found you have to plastic off so much of the shop it's just not worthwhile that the stuff the mist goes everywhere so at least unless I've got a really good setup to do I hardly ever use this anymore at all so but on a whim you know I bought it and <laughs> I've still got it. Might come in handy one day. It comes in handy. I've used it to shoot varathane on some wood projects. Um, works actually really, really well. I, I do like it for that. And I think last but not least, we're about the 12-minute mark here, is just some of the brushes, the craft brushes that I use for uh, doing some of my painting and etc. So, okay, that's just the first little section. Any questions, you know, ask below or I'll try and put as many links as I can. Uh, some people say I talk too fast. If I do, I apologize. I'll try and slow down if I'm still talking too fast. But uh, don't be afraid to ask YouTube folks or uh, anybody on the forum. Just ask again. But uh, you can just rewind the vid. No, rewind. You can go back and just pause it and see what the different brands are, what I use. And again... I don't get paid by anybody. There's no product placement. Uh, there's, it's just what I use. Um, if you're happy with what you got, keep using it. But I just get asked a lot what I use. And hey, I'm just a guy. I'm nobody. I'm just passing on what I use. And if you, you care, care to use that knowledge, 
go for it. If not, whatever. Right on, gang. So it will be a part two in another week, maybe.